God we serve. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so glad to be online with you today and to greet you in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is Pastor Leroy Carter, and I want to welcome all of you who will be watching this video. Watch all of you who are online. I want to give out a shout out, a shout out to my son Wes. Hey, Wes, and all of our family up in Pennsylvania and Jersey. I want to give a shout out to Ryan Trogler. Praise God. I want to thank God for Ryan's testimony. Maybe we can bring Ryan on in about a minute or so, and he can give his own testimony. How about God? How God gave him a job. I want to give a shout out to all of you. And we give God the praise. The songwriter said, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I want to repeat that. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I know many of you have had, have had restless nights. Sometimes we stay and lay in bed all night. Sometimes we have cried all night. Sometimes we've been praying all night long, waiting for the breakthrough. The songwriter said, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning we serve the mighty god he knows your needs he knows all about you he loves you what a mighty god we serve and so this morning we come to you in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth and we give praise to god we give a shout out to god hallelujah for keeping us and providing every need we know the things don't always go well but with God, all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are the called according to his purposes. Praise God. We give a shout out to Tammy Nichols in Ohio. Hey, Tammy, God bless you. Let's bring Ryan Trogler on. Ryan, let's let's uh, I want to bring Ryan on and 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 let God let him tell you about how God blessed him with a new job. Ryan, can you do that? Okay, I can't hear you. You're coming a little bit louder. Right, yeah, one second. Okay, Ryan, okay, we okay. can hear you. Okay, we're good to go now? <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, Ryan, God bless you, man. Hey, God bless you, Pastor Carter. Praise God. Uh, yeah, I have a... Pretty good testimony here to tell you. Let's hear um, it, man. Take your time. Yeah. <laughs> you got plenty of time, man. Give you a whole half okay, hour okay. if you want it. Well, I don't want to know if I'll go that long, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, God does work in mysterious ways. He works in mightily ways, and He works for everybody. Where the, you know you got to believe and have the faith, and you know just walk in God, and He'll show you all sorts of miracles. Believe me. Um, I lost my job. Uh, this has probably been about two and a half weeks ago, three weeks ago, maybe something like that, close to it. And I've been been praying and been praying, and you know, because I like to work, I like to, you know, I got a family to support and bills to pay, just like everybody else. And I've been praying, been praying, and then, and all of a sudden, my, you know, God come through with a job for me, so I get to start on, I get to start on Tuesday. <laughs> not Monday, not tomorrow, but Tuesday. Hallelujah. Um, and the other testimony I have, believe it or not, um, as I lost my job, I couldn't pay for the next course in the Paul Begley School of Prophecy. And I'm and my wife and I just prayed, just sat and prayed together, and it was just happened to be. I was listening to the online college course that night that a student came on and said that they would pay for the college course. Praise God. Praise God. So if anybody says God doesn't perform miracles, you tell them to talk to me. <laughs> because he just performed two of them for me within three weeks. 
Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it from Ryan. Ryan Trogler up in Pennsylvania. And Ryan lost his job a couple weeks ago. He and his wife prayed, and God gave him a new job. He starts to say, hallelujah. Praise God. What a mighty God we serve. And then Ryan is one of our students. He's one of our outstanding students in the Paul Bagley School of Prophecy, where people's lives are being changed in this mighty school. And Ryan, when he lost his job, he could not enroll to pay for the next course. And the next semester begins next week. And one of the students volunteered to pay for his uh, schooling. And Ryan doesn't does not know who that student is, but we just thank God for the love of one of our students to pay for Ryan's course. Praise God. God is a miracle working God. Hallelujah. Let's hear from Tammy Nichols in Ohio. Tammy, how are you today? Good. How are you, Pastor? Praise God, Tammy. Praise God. What do you have to say about Jesus, Tammy? Oh, he's awesome. And I'm really glad that um, that guy got a job in a student paid for his class. That's that's amazing. And I also start a new job on Monday. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. It's new job time. <laughs> Y'all, it's new job time. Tell us about it, Tammy. It's a work at home position. And um, I'll be doing tech support for Internet and uh, people's computers. Praise God. Praise God. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for giving Tammy a new job. Thank you for giving Ryan a new job. Thank you for stretching out your mighty hand, God, and showing that you care for your people. We just praise God. Tammy, what else would you like to say to us today? Oh, that just just keep on praying because prayer works, even when it doesn't seem like it is. And, and you're getting worried and it's down to crunch time, God pulls through for us. Hallelujah. Praise God. What a mighty word. What a mighty word. What a mighty word from Tammy Nichols, ladies and gentlemen. That's a good prophetic word. That almost leads us into our sermon today about the gift of prophecy. She said, when it gets down to crunch time, you keep on trusting in the Lord and God will bless you. Hallelujah. Praise God. I, um, Every now and then, I know my son likes to be incognito, but I want to bring, I want to ask my son Wes to come on and just say hello to us. Wes lives in Penns, Pennsville, New Jersey. Come on and greet everybody, Wes, and, and give us a, a word of encouragement. Well, bless the Lord, um, oh my soul, and all that is within us. Thank you, Lord, for um, this day, and I just want to uh, thank the Lord for family and all the blessings we have and life, the life we take for granted sometimes. But it's it's good to be here and it's good to uh, be able to share with you all. Praise God. Thank Praise you, Wes. God. Thank, Thank you, man. Give Thank my you, love man. to the Give family. Love. We're going to be up there to see you there. in September. Can't wait to see you guys again. But you all keep on keeping on in the name of the Lord. Well, let's bring Christy Carpenter, Aaron and Christy from uh, um Idaho. We've got friends up in Kuna, Idaho, and let's hear from the carpenters. Let's see what God is doing with the carpenters. Would one of the carpenters come on? Well, hello, Mr. Carter. God bless you, Christy. How are you? Can you hear me? Yes, praise God. It's just me this morning. <laughs> okay. I just want to tell you all thank you. It is so awesome to get up in the morning and hear you guys and just glorifying God and how amazing and truly awesome he is and how he works in each and every one of our lives every single day and how we can see him working and oh, it's just awesome to be with you this morning. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you, Christy Carpenter. And give our love to Aaron and to the family. And praise God. We, and, and, and your daughter who just graduated, God's got a plan for her. I can see God moving in her life, and he's going to reveal a window to her soon. We just thank God for you all. Keep on keeping on. Now, there are callers on. I don't know who they are because I can't identify all of you, and I can't bring everybody on. But with someone else online, just uh, unmute your phone 
and, and say hello to us. Tell us who you are. I'm looking for Linda Barrett if she's on today. Linda, are you on? I'm on. My name is Shamir from Living Water Ministries. Shamir, Shamir from Living Water Ministries. Hey, Shamir, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I cannot complain. Um, God has been so good to me. Um, I can say, uh, you know, I have some blessings and some testimonies to give myself. Uh, today, um, well, this week, um, I was offered to go to a radio station um, to uh, share some light on how to be a, a you know, the, my walk in Christ and how I've grown in Christ. Um, and I get to go on today at, at three o'clock. And also, um, my pastor, I'm on here today because my pastor hurt herself and she told us the law going. So this was a good opportunity for us to get back connected um, with Pastor Carter's uh, church because usually when we don't have a service, we get on. So this is just a privilege to me. So uh, along with the blessing of going on the show today, um, to speak on how God has been good to me and brought me from where I was to where I'm at now, um, and I also had a privilege to get on here today with, with you, Pastor Clark. Praise God. Shamir, Shamir, and, and James, give my love to James, your husband, and your family. And I'm so glad. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Pastor James, Carter. James, God bless you, man. Ladies and gentlemen, God James and too. Shamir, they're students in our Back to Basic School of Ministry, and they're working on their associate's degree and doing a great job. So I want to give uh, kudos, a shout out to you. They live up in Toby Farms outside of Chester, Pennsylvania, and they're good friends of ours. And if your pastor, Dr. Jean Bratton, is on, we want her to unmute her phone too but they go to a powerful church living waters ministry in wilmington delaware so we give a shout out to james and shamir to loretta jackson to all of you and to hi Dr. pastor james. carter hey how you doing is this loretta yes god bless you loretta praise god praise god we thank God the people from all over the nation are coming on to the online church. And Loretta, Jackie wants to thank you for the gift you sent her. She's going to get in touch with you personally. We just praise God. And ladies and gentlemen, Loretta Jackson does a, she, she makes pillows and tote bags. You've never seen pillows and tote bags like Loretta Jackson's made. So we're going to be announcing this soon, putting some stuff online so you can see the quality of, of her work. And it's cost effective. Mm -hmm. I mean, Loretta Jackson has a gift. I mean, she can put she can put something in into reality that God gives her and she provides it for the body of Christ. And and Loretta is not greedy for money. She sells stuff. Her her stuff is really inexpensive. But we just thank God for your gift. We yeah. thank God for thank Shabir you, and James. Yes. Uh, your pastor Gene Bratton. And you all keep on keeping on. We thank God for the carpenters up in Idaho. Thank God for my son. Thank God for Linda Barrett. And I know I started calling names and I'm going to miss some of you all, but I just praise God. You all keep keeping on. Tammy Nichols, you keep on keeping on. God is opening doors of ministry for you all. Father God, use uh, Shamir Mobley as she goes before the radio this afternoon. Give yes, her a Lord. word, God. Let her not be afraid. Help her to trust in the Lord. Open up new doors for uh, Shamir and James to be witnesses for you, Lord, on the radio, on the TV, on the internet, in the streets, in their home, wherever they are. Use them to the praise of your glory. Lord, I pray this prayer for all of our listeners. Ryan Trogler, as he ventures into his new job. Tammy Nichols, as she ventures into her new job. And all the people, use us to the praise of your glory. And we thank you. Thank you for your miracles. Thank you for continuing to remind your people that you love us. And Lord, we thank you for back to basics online church let the word be a blessing to the people today and to the praise of your name lord in jesus name we thank you amen praise god amen 
So I want to thank all of you for, for sharing your testimonies. Maybe we have a little bit of time at the end of the service. We like to keep our services within 45 minutes, and uh, we praise God. We thank God. Uh, these services are um, uh, recorded so that we can send them. These services are blessing many nations in Africa, nations in Europe, nations in South America, and throughout North America, God is using this Back to Basics online church to reach people, to let people know God loves you. He loves you. He's got a plan. Jesus died on the cross for all mankind. He is no respecter of persons. And whosoever will, you can be saved by calling on the name of Jesus. And so uh, let's just turn in our Bibles. If you have your Bibles, turn to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, or if you want to download 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and the first five verses, the first five verses. I thank God for this online church where we're teaching people a lot of things they're not getting in the, the, the regular church. We've been in a series, ladies and gentlemen, on why every believer ought to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Why every believer ought to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And we're sticking with this theme. We're going to be teaching on this theme for a few months. And each week we're going to be building precept upon precept. Showing you why you ought to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And if you say, well, I'm already filled with the Holy Spirit. Then we'll uh, change the theme for you. Why every believer ought to be refilled with the Holy Spirit. Because he is the one. He's the one who directs uh, employers, Ryan Trogler, to give Ryan a job. Give him a chance. Give uh, Tammy Nichols a job. Uh, give Shamir a healing. Give her an opportunity to talk on the radio and testify about Jesus. Give James an opportunity to witness on his job and to lead men and women to Jesus Christ. It's the Holy Spirit. And so we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. A lot of people in the church have been misguided into thinking that that one time Holy Ghost baptism they experienced back in 1970 is going to carry them into the uh, 20, uh, 21st century. No, no, no. When you look at the book of Acts and read the book of Acts, and when you read 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14, you'll realize that many of us have been misguided. But the scripture teaches us, especially when you look at the stories in Acts about how the, the apostles were filled again and again and again. And when you look at the life of Jesus Christ, Jesus would minister, and in one situation he said, who touched me? I felt virtue. I felt power. Leave me. And so after Jesus ministered, he would go up on a mountain or on a boat or into a quiet place and minister unto his father and, 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 and allow the Holy Spirit to fill him again and again. Jesus said, I cannot do anything unless I see my father do it. And the Holy Spirit would reveal to Jesus what the Father was doing or what the Father was saying. And so, ladies and gentlemen, because Jesus needed to be filled over and over again by the Spirit. Because Jesus needed to be led by the Spirit. I'm going to get on board. I'm, I, I see this thing. I'm going to get in on this good thing. Hey, Tammy Nichols, let's get in on this. Christy Carpenter, let's get in on this. Praise God. Let's, let's get filled. Seek the Lord. And if you have not been Holy Spirit filled, ladies and gentlemen, ask the Holy Spirit to fill you and receive by faith. Ask the Holy Spirit to fill you and receive by faith. Read 1 Corinthians 14. Read 1 Corinthians 12. Read uh, Ephesians 5, 18 that says, And be not drunk with wine in which is excess, but be filled with the Holy Ghost. Read Ephesians 6, uh, verses 10 through 18 about putting on the whole 
armor of God. When you put on the whole armor of God by faith, the Holy Spirit fights for you. He opens doors for you, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, I gave you plenty of time to find 1 Corinthians 14. So let's look at these verses and then spend a few minutes as we discuss the subject of the gift of prophecy. We're in our theme on why every believer ought to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And this week we're looking at the third gift of the Holy Spirit. We're looking at the gift of prophecy. The scripture says, follow after charity or love and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. The scripture teaches us, follow after prophecy, prophecy Follow after prophecy and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understands him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church. I would that ye all spake with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied, for greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret, that the church may receive edifying. Ladies and gentlemen, the scripture lays it out right here. That controversy between speaking in tongues and prophecy, it's settled right here. Read the scripture. Church, read the scripture. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a whole lot of people running around speaking in tongues thinking, I've got it. I have arrived. I've made it. Ladies and gentlemen, no, 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 no. This scripture even teaches us. Listen, the scripture says, I would that ye all spake with tongues but rather that ye prophesied. Listen, listen, for greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret, that the church may receive edifying. Ladies and gentlemen, the church has gotten this thing all wrong. I remember back in the 80s when we began, when we, I first got baptized in the Holy Ghost, and we began ministering to people, and they began to receive the Holy Spirit, and they began to receive their prayer language. Now, we're going to be preaching on the gift of tongues and interpretation in a few weeks. Today, we want to focus on prophesying. But I remember how uh, no, no one wanted to prophesy and no one wanted to listen to the prophets. And the scripture says, do not despise prophecy. And so everybody was getting into tongues and everybody wanted to have a tongue speaking in the unknown language. Nobody knew what they were saying, but they were speaking in tongues, praying in tongues. And church services were disrupted. There was confusion all over the place. And some of you may recall that it was confusion. And then churches split and congregations split because uh, uh, preachers would be preaching and somebody would jump up in the audience and try to override the preacher speaking in tongues and it was mass confusion and the preacher would try to reprimand the person to shut them shut them down and then somebody else would pop up with another tongue because they thought that because they were speaking in tongues they had it and they thought that they could speak any time they wanted to but the scripture teaches us that the the gifts are subject to the prophet the gifts, ladies and gentlemen, whether you speak in tongues, whether you have a word of knowledge, whether you have a word of wisdom, whether you have the gift of faith, the gift of healing, the gift of working miracles, those gifts are subject to your spirit. And the scripture says we must do all things decently and in order. I thank God for the online church. I wish every believer would listen to this message because this would... Uh, dispel confusion in the churches. We serve an orderly God. He's not a God of confusion. Satan is the author of confusion. So as we look more at the gifts of the Holy Spirit, today we're looking at the gift of prophecy and how God wants to raise up prophets. And we're going to spend more time later on in the gifts of tongues and interpretation of tongues. Yes, 
tongues is real, ladies and gentlemen. Tongues is a gift of the Holy Spirit. But the church, out of ignorance and not studying the scriptures, there are people who have the gift of tongues but don't read their Bible. And so they're in error everywhere they go. They're speaking in tongues on their jobs. They're speaking in their tongues in Sunday school. They're speaking in their tongue in tongues in Walmart. And they're out of order because the Bible teaches us in 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14 how to operate in tongues. And the Bible teaches us also how to operate in prophecy. So today we want to look at prophecy. And prophecy is Hearing God's voice, ladies and gentlemen. Here's a very simple definition. Hearing God's voice and then speaking in your natural language what God says to you. <clears throat> That's what prophecy is. <clears throat> prophecy can be preaching. Prophecy can be testimony. Prophecy can be Shamir Mobley going on radio this afternoon at 3 o'clock and giving her testimony She's, going, she's not going to be speaking in tongues on the radio. Shamir is going to speak in her natural English language. And my friends in Kenya, some speak in Swahili. So prophecy is Swahili. And those who speak French uh, in Cameroon or in France, uh, the Francophone, Francophones, they speak in French. That's their natural language. So prophecy is speaking in your natural language so that people understand. So that when people come into the church or into your house and they hear you speak in their own language, they understand. They feel welcome. But if people come into the church and everybody's speaking in tongues, one pops up here and one pops up there and they're speaking in some strange language, the Bible even says, won't they say you're crazy? They sure will because you are crazy if you're operating out of order. And so let's pull ourselves in. Let's study the scriptures. Let's be obedient to the scripture. And let's go back to the gift of prophecy. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 5, For greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaks in tongues. That ought to shut down a lot of those tongue talkers who are out of order. You see, when you speak in tongues, you're speaking unto God. It's between you and God. And if you're speaking in tongues in the church, what you're speaking to God, unless there is an interpreter to interpret what you're speaking to God, you have caused confusion. Uh-oh. And we have caused confusion in a lot of areas. And so let's get this thing right. The scriptures teach us what is right. The Bible says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Order my steps in your word, God. Let no iniquity have dominion over me. And don't let the sin of pride have dominion over you. Some people will be listening to this message, and because you're puffed up and you're proud and you've been operating your own way for 20, 30 years, you don't want Leroy Carter or anybody else to teach you. You're just going to keep on doing what you're doing, and God is going to meet you down the road. He will meet you down the road just like Balaam on, the, on his ass. Uh, uh, he met the angel of the Lord down the road. So I, I want to warn you, don't continue to sin. If you know you're operating in error, repent and be taught and, and, and have a teachable spirit. Ask God to give you a teachable spirit. Ask God to humble you that somebody can teach you. We've got folks in this nation and in other nations, nobody can teach them anything. They think they know everything. But ladies and gentlemen, hey, take it from one who knows uh, the mighty hand of God. Take it from one. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Every believer ought to have two or three spiritual advisors where you can test the spirit by the spirit, where you can test a word uh, but with, with, with your spiritual advisors uh, to see if they believe it is of God. And we teach all this in the Paul Bakley School of Prophecy and in the Back to Basic School of Ministry. So if you feel like enrolling, get in touch with us. These are life-changing courses that, that we're offering. Praise God. And they are cost effective. In other words, you can afford them. So let's look at prophecy. Prophecy, to define prophecy again. Prophecy is speaking in your natural language what God has said to you. And it works like this. You go to God and you talk to God and God talks to you. 
and God gives you a word. And God requires you to say that word to someone else. When you speak that word that you heard from God, that is called prophesying. It is not all about telling the future, predicting the future. Some prophets do that. But prophecy, basic prophecy is hearing from God and speaking what you heard from God. Now, if what you are speaking is not of God and you say it is of God, you're in danger. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible warns us against lying prophets and against lying testimonies. And we got a lot of folks in, in their pulpits, ladies and gentlemen, right now, lying, testifying. They ain't testifying. They're testifying. We've got, we've, got, we've got people who've spent a whole week building their sermon, building their case, building, trying to figure, how can I pick the pockets of the people? How can I get these stingy people to give more to the church? How can I get them to follow my program? Ladies and gentlemen, we've got bishops who spend all six months trying to get their pastors to uh, promote the bishop's program. Now, if the bishop is out of touch with God, and many of them are, I know some bishops who are out of touch with God. If the bishops are out of touch with God and they're uh, uh, prevailing upon their churches to teach or preach the bishop's program, promote the bishop's book and this, and a lot of bishops are promoting their own books and their own materials, and ladies and gentlemen, they haven't heard from God lately, and yet they've got hundreds of pastors, hundreds of churches under them, and the churches, uh, when they set their agenda, ladies and gentlemen, when they, most churches, when they set their agenda, they set their agenda in November or December for the coming year. Very few churches leave any room, ladies and gentlemen, for the Holy Spirit to intervene. Tammy Nichols, do you hear me? Christy Carpenter, do you hear me? Wes, do you hear me? Very few churches leave any openings in their airtight agendas for the Holy Spirit to direct the program or to guide or lead in another direction. So here's what you have in the church, ladies and gentlemen, and this is why the church is crippling many people. This is why people are leaving the church. They've got Mother's Day. They've got Women's Day. They've got Men's Day. They've got Children's Day. They've got Usher's Day. Everybody got a program. And here, having been a pastor, here's what they do. They ask, they have a church meeting. They ask each group, each auxiliary, choose a date for your annual day. Choose a date. And most people want to choose a date in the springtime or summertime or early fall. They don't want to choose any date in the winter because they know it's going to snow and people ain't going to come out. And if people don't come out, they ain't going to raise no money. Come on, somebody. I know what I'm talking about. Can I get an amen or an amen in the chat window? And so when most churches set their agendas, they let the okay. people direct the agenda. They let the people direct the ministry. They, okay, they may set up Men's Day in June, Women's Day in July, uh, 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 everybody's birthday in August, uh, back to school day in September, uh, give a backpack to a kid in October. And, and they have all these programs set up. And uh, everyone is a money maker, ladies and gentlemen. The objective is to make money. The objective is not to win souls or edify the body of Christ or speak the word of God. And so, ladies and gentlemen, what you have in the church you have programs already designed in November and December for the coming year. And if the Holy Spirit, ladies and gentlemen, wants to break through and say, this is the direction I want to lead the church in. Ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Spirit is hindered, frustrated, and thwarted. Grieve. The scripture says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. But the churches grieve the Holy Spirit every Sunday, every week. And bishops, apostles, those of you in, in who have great influence in the churches, many of you are directing your people to carry out your program. God wants to carry out his program. And so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if nobody's hearing from God and everybody thinks the bishop is so spiritual, everybody thinks Pastor so-and-so is so spiritual, 
and, and they believe every word that pastor so-and-so says, and they hang on it. If the pastor is in error, ladies and gentlemen, the whole church is messed up. And I found in my world travels that most churches try to duplicate the church in America. And if their model church is off course, then the churches, whether they're in Africa, Asia, South America, or where Europe, wherever, the church is off course. Why? Because they do not seek the voice of God, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, you just, just can't start a church and start saying what's on your mind because you may not have the mind of Christ. We've got pastors who are not even saved. We've got people in leadership positions in the church who are not saved. And yes, we have bishops in these denominations who who are not even saved. Ladies and gentlemen, they were sprinkled when they were little babies. They were, they were baptized at the age of 13, and they were told that they were members of the church. They have not been born again. I don't want to give such a negative look view of the church, but ladies and gentlemen, we've got to take a real look at it. That is why there's such confusion when it comes to prophecy and greater confusion when it comes to tongues. People say, thus saith the Lord, or the Lord said to me. I heard, I've heard preachers say, the Lord said to me. Uh, uh, run out in the middle of traffic and stop and, and hold up your hands and all the, all the cars will stop. Well, you try that if you want to. God has not told people to do goofy stuff like run out into the middle of traffic and stop and raise your hand. You'll get splattered. You'll get run over. You'll get, you'll get smeared on the highway. But I've known preachers, ladies and gentlemen. I've known bishops who said, the Lord told me. And, and, and I, I know some bishops, they don't even teach prayer in their churches. I know pastors, they don't even teach the people how to pray and how it is important to pray. And if you want God's direction in your life, you need to pray and spend quiet time. Ladies and gentlemen, they don't teach that in many churches. So what they do, uh, the bishop hands down a list of subjects for, the, for, for this month, and that's what the preachers preach. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't be like that. I can't be like that. I can't let any bishop tell me what to preach. You see, I, I serve the shepherd and bishop of my soul, the Lord Jesus Christ, because it was not the bishop who came into my life on July 20th, 1969, and saved me. It was the Lord Jesus Christ. And from that time, I've been saying what thus saith the Lord. Some folks hate my guts because I'm bold, and the boldness comes from the Holy Spirit. But ladies and gentlemen, I would rather say what thus saith the Lord than to try to be popular and say what thus saith the bishop, or to try to hold on to my position as a pastor uh, and, and just go along with the agenda that the people raise up. Ladies and gentlemen, there are churches who where where. Uh, the women set the agenda in the church because there are only a handful of men. So it's a woman-oriented agenda. I'm not bashing women, but ladies and gentlemen, the gospel is the whole gospel for all people. And so we need to get back to hearing the voice of God. And that is why uh, it is important that we pray that God raise up prophets God, raise up an army of prophets. I thank God that I'm the dean of the Paul Bakley School of Prophecy, where we are raising up an army of prophets and teaching them what thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Some of you listening in today are members of this great life-changing school. And prophecy is defined as hearing from God and speaking what God has said in your natural language and ladies and gentlemen don't try to be deep don't try to be deep don't try to be like td jakes or joel osteen just be yourself just do what god says god says thou shall love your neighbor as yourself then tell people the lord said you shall love your neighbor as yourself god said uh we ought to feed the poor and and, and help the poor and the widows and the orphans well just say it say it in your english language don't try to be deep just tell people the Lord, I believe the Lord wants us to help the widows and the, the orphans in this community. And just do, when the church does what the Lord says do, when the church hears from God, when the preacher seeks the Lord, 
and and preach the word of God and and stop trying to be pretty and and, and you preachers stop trying to be so cute. Some of you are so cute. Some of you are so prissy. Oh, just stop it. Just be yourself. Just be yourself. If you've got rugged edges, then and let your rugged edges show, but show some love. Minister in love, ladies and gentlemen. So that's what prophecy is all about. So many people think prophecy predicting the future. Everybody wants to know what's going to happen. What's going to happen uh, is uh, is the, the, the new capital of Jerusalem, does that mean it's the end of the world and this? Or are they going to set up the, the, uh, the new temple and all this? I don't know, ladies and gentlemen. God knows. All I know is I'm just going to trust the Lord and go along with the program. And the, the scripture says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. I'm going to trust the Lord. I'm going to walk with him day by day. I'm going to stay in my word. And ladies and gentlemen, there are so many people, they want to hear from the prophets. They want to hear, they've got to hear from a prophet, and people choose their prophets. And if your prophet is not hearing from God, if your prophet is making this stuff up, or if your prophet is uh, promoting fake news, you're in trouble. And see, we've got people, here's the dilemma, ladies and gentlemen, here is the rub. There are so many people in the body of Christ, they're depending on the preacher or the prophet to speak to them what thus saith the Lord, where we all should have a Bible or be able to download the Bible or to go to www.biblegateway.com and download the scripture in any version and study it. The problem is, the body of Christ is bless God just to bless God lazy. Yes, I'm going to say it, Tammy Nichols. The body of Christ is just to bless God lazy to study and read the word of God. To add on to that, the body of Christ is just to bless God lazy to seek God for what God wants to be done. And we're so dependent on having a preacher giving us uh, two Alka-Seltzer on Sunday, plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. We drink the Alka-Seltzer, that word that we hear from the pre preacher, and then we go back to our homes living any old way we want to, not having heard from God. Ladies and gentlemen, to be a Christian means you have died to self. You have died to self. Your life doesn't even belong to you. Galatians 2, 3, uh, 3 and 20 says, For I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. But Christ lives in me. And the life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So we're not our own, ladies and gentlemen. We're under a mandate to study, to show ourselves approved unto God workmen who needeth not to be ashamed we have the responsibility to study the scripture rightly divide the word of truth and and then put on the whole armor of god and to fight the good fight of faith we're under a mandate to to complete the course ladies and gentlemen we're under a mandate to obey every word of god and if we don't study our word then we're not getting uh, uh, the blessings. We're being disobedient. By the way, we have a great course called Understanding the Bible. Uh, Shamir and James are taking that course right now, and, and, and so is Loretta, and so are many others. Uh, uh, Christy, I think, is uh, getting ready to take that, or she's taking that course, Understanding the Bible, where we go from, from Genesis to Revelation. Praise God. And um, We've got people all over the world who have taken this course and have been blessed and have been encouraged to study the Bible for themselves. There is a great thing that happens when you search the scriptures and begin reading. And when you're reading, ladies and gentlemen, remember, you're not reading alone. If you read with the right attitude and, and humble your heart, then you'll see that the Holy Spirit will speak to you even as you read the scriptures. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you and guide you and give you revelation. So ladies and gentlemen, we just wanted to speak a little bit today about the gift of prophecy. It's one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit that we find in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and in 1 
Corinthians chapter 14, the scripture says, follow after love. We're to walk in love and desire spiritual gifts. Ladies and gentlemen, don't be like your neighbors, your friends who, I don't want the Holy Ghost, I don't want this. No, desire to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Desire spiritual gifts. I was telling Jackie yesterday, I said, Jackie, uh, people say to me, you, uh, you, you're too holy, you're too religious. Ladies and gentlemen, I must live for Jesus because it was Jesus who delivered me when I was on my deathbed. And I've been, I've been on my deathbed many times, but it was Jesus who saved my soul and delivered me and set me free. The Boston Celtics couldn't do it. The Cleveland Cavaliers couldn't do it. The Philadelphia Phillies couldn't do it. And when I, I lived in Pennsylvania, shoe fly pies and, and, and Rita's water ice and Philadelphia uh, soft pretzels and, and cheese steaks and, and, and Philly hoagies could not save me. It was the love of Jesus Christ. So yes, 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 yes. I'm, I'm all sold out to Jesus, and I, I want, want to give him more of me because the only way we can make it, ladies and gentlemen, is to realize that we have died to self and that the life we live is the Holy Spirit living in us. And if you reject the Holy Spirit, you don't have any life in you. So we, and we appeal to you, to those listening who are not saved, ask the Lord to save you. Receive the gift of salvation by faith and receive the Holy Spirit that you'll have life. Jesus said, I'm come, that you have life, that you may have it more abundantly. And so we have many prophets. We look at the prophets in the Old Testament. We give a shout out to Linda Barrett. Hey, Linda, God bless you. Uh, many prophets in the Old Testament. And the scripture says, despise not prophesying. The people listen to those prophets, and in those days, uh, uh, the way in which most people heard from God was through the prophets. But we live in the New Testament age because Jesus died for our sins, and we have received Jesus as Savior and Lord. That means Christ is in us, the hope of glory, and the Holy Spirit lives in us, and we can seek God. We can seek God for ourselves. Yes, we need prophets. We need preachers. We need teachers to hear from God and go to speak to people. And I pray that God will raise up an army of prophets. But ladies and gentlemen, do not make the excuse that you cannot hear from God. We have a course called Communion with God in which we teach you how to hear God's voice. And everyone who's taken that course has had their lives changed because they can hear God for themselves. And now they can go and speak to others what they hear from God. And they're, they're, they're prophets. You don't have to be called to be a prophet, but you can prophesy. Prophesy means I heard God say this and I want to share this to you and I want to share it in the language that you understand. Praise God. Jeremiah declares, then the Lord said to me, the prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination and a thing of naught and the deceit of their heart. Ladies and gentlemen, the scripture says, warns us, beware of false prophets. Beware of false prophets, ladies and gentlemen. Beware. Be careful who you follow. Be careful who you listen to. Everybody saying, thus saith the Lord, has not heard from God. I want to say these things again, ladies and gentlemen. Be careful who you follow. Be careful who you listen to. Everyone saying, thus saith the Lord, has not heard from the Lord. People are being deceived all over the place. But you don't have to be deceived. You seek the Lord with all your heart. You get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Learn how to minister to God. Learn how to worship God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. And let the Lord guide you. Matthew 7, 15 says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ladies and gentlemen, 
there are people they come to you they look holy they look religious they act righteous they act religious but they're sheep they're wolves <clears throat> in sheep's clothing and wolves wolves are not seeking anything but a good meal they want to eat feast on the sheep Jesus declared concerning the last days in Matthew 24 11 and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many Jesus says in Matthew 24 24 for there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible they shall deceive the very elect there are people coming they will have signs and wonders they will appear to be holy and righteous and they will deceive the very elect even those who are saved will be deceived that is why we must be alert ladies and gentlemen that is why prophecy is so important ladies and gentlemen don't depend on somebody else to preach to you or for you seek the Lord with all your heart every believer has a right and the responsibility to seek the Lord for yourself and every believer can hear from God uh, Romans Romans in the book of Romans it says thou art inexcusable O man so don't uh, have to face God with the excuse and God says why didn't you listen to me well Lord I I, I thought my preacher he was he was he was fly he was anointed he was sharp he was pretty I thought he had it and, and you sent me there to that church yes God may have sent you there to that church but you still need to be alert everything in the pulpit is not of God ladies and gentlemen and you need to know the Word of God and the voice of God so you need to develop a prayer life you need to develop a Bible study life you need to be taught the Word of God get under some anointed teaching come and be a part of our school of prophecy get under some anointed teaching where God has used tried and proved men and women to teach uh, these courses praise God John first John 4 1 says beloved believe not every spirit but try the spirits whether they are of God because many false prophets are going out into the world and so if you think this person is holy or this person is spiritual you test God you test that spirit you ask God that includes me if you want to know whether I'm spiritual whether or not I'm God you test the spirit by the spirit you ask God the Father God the Holy Spirit revealed to me not only me but every preacher every teacher every prophet everyone saying thus saith the Lord <coughs> is not of the Lord okay so we there's some there's so much more uh, in this study of prophecy but we're not going to go there uh, we're studying we're taking the gifts of the spirit we have looked in the last three weeks at the gift of knowledge and wisdom we've looked at the gift of prophecy next week we want to look at the gift of faith the gift of faith ladies and gentlemen these nine gifts of the Holy Spirit in 1st Corinthians chapter 12 are going to revolutionize your life and God wants you to have these spirits God wants you to have these gifts he wants you to have the Holy Spirit and the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit you can operate in all nine of these gifts ladies and gentlemen just to review the gift of knowledge in essence when you want to know what's going on when you do when you do uh, the Marvin Gaye thing and say hey God what's going on when you approach God with humility and ask him God what's going on what why am I going through this what is going on what's happening in this nation what's going on God will give you a word of knowledge he will reveal to you what's going on in your nation in your church in your home and in your life that's the word of knowledge it's a gift of the Holy Spirit I used the example some weeks ago when I lost my car keys when I was jogging they were in my back pocket when I came back after jogging about a mile mile and a half my keys were not there the Lord said retrace he gave me a word of knowledge reach and he gave me a word of wisdom also a word of wisdom 
tells you what to do. The word of knowledge tells you what's going on. The word of wisdom tells you what to do. God said, retrace your steps. I retraced my steps. I walked and retraced my steps. And I had my family with me. Wes was there. They were with me. We were all looking for my keys. At a certain place, God gave me a word of knowledge. He had already given me a word of wisdom. said, retrace your steps. When I got to a certain spot, the Holy Spirit said, stop. He said, this is where you took your handkerchief out to blow your nose. Ladies and gentlemen, I had taken my handkerchief out, and the very spot where I took my handkerchief out to blow my nose, the Holy Spirit said, now look down. Ladies and gentlemen, I looked down, and there were my car keys. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, these gifts of the Holy Spirit are available to us. We'll go and, and learn about the gift of faith next week. In the meantime, I want you to read and reread 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 13, and 14. And especially 13 because you can have the gifts of the Spirit. But if you are not operating in love, ladies and gentlemen, you're just a noisemaker. You're just wasting God's time and yours. So praise God. I thank God for you. I pray that this a message has helped you. Those of you looking at the video in, in other nations and across this nation, uh, I pray that this message will bless you. If you have any questions, please contact me. My email is LeroyCarter69 at Yahoo.com or you can call me on my cell 404-205-1101 or hit me on my Facebook account or my Twitter account. Um, and I'll be glad to take time and answer your questions. In the meantime, you keep on trusting in the Lord. You keep on praising the Lord. You keep on blessing God. No matter what's going on, you trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust and respects not the proud nor such as turn aside to lies. We're going to stop the recording, but we're going to uh, ask you to stay on in case there are any questions, any comments. And, and Father, we pray that people all over the world will hear this message. And if there are any who are not saved, and if they want to receive Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, help them to ask you right now and to receive Jesus by faith to be their Savior and Lord. And we thank you, Lord. Keep the believers, keep the church, add daily such as should be saved. And we thank you. And thank you for the Back to Basics online church. In Jesus' name we praise you. Amen.